So uh, um, Sheila is supposed to go now, but she graciously allowed me to jump ahead. <laughs> Um, so, uh, again, my name is Natalie Wood, and I'm an artist, uh, an educator, a curator, and I have another role now, I'm a mother. Um, I keep talking about my roles, keep expanding. Um, my work is politically engaged and identity-based. I'm concerned essentially with two things. One, issues of representation, where I continue to interrogate representations of race, gender, sexuality within mass media, popular culture, and history. And two, I'm interested in disrupting or finding ways to challenge hegemonic systems. So the ultimate goal would be to, for me to use education, knowledge, and inspiration to do these things. And in particular, looking at uh, appropriations, juxtapositions, counter-appropriations, and uh, always working to insert the black feminist, queer, and diasporic, diasporic identities into, into hegemonic historical narratives. So I'll begin. I usually start most of my talks with this young woman here. Um, as she's packed in her, her, her suitcase, she has a, a ship that she somehow managed, or boat she somehow managed to pack in there, because I feel like a lot of what my experiences have been has been about movement, has been about shifting from one place to the other, about which roles do I adopt in particular situations. So um, I will begin with uh, this piece of work. Oops, you guys have it on that time, basically. Um, this is called The Tree of Forgetfulness, and uh, my work, um, Michelle talked about loss, and many of us talk about loss. Um, this work, references a moment in time when Africans, when they were being enslaved, part of the ritual that when they went through was to be taken around a tree called, which was called the tree of forgetfulness. And as they went around the tree, they were told, okay, with this revolution, or with this circling, you will forget your land. With this movement around the tree, you will forget your family. With this movement around the tree, you forget your language, right? And so the process being to wipe us clean before we entered into the new world where we would be reprogrammed. So I start, I start with this because when I ask myself, why is it that I do work? Why is it that I do this, this artwork? And this is part of the reason. The reason being the loss, the erasure, and trying to find ways, to, ways around that. Um, my art practice embraces three areas, so uh, there's my artistic production, my community art projects, and my curatorial projects. I have three series but within my, my that I, artist production that I want to share. Uh, this first series is Letters to My Ancestors. So in this series, I was creating visual letters in a way to bridge the, the time gap, the space gap, the geographical gap to my ancestors to ask questions. The questions, and, and within, so there's text within the work, and there's beading, and, and mirrors, and, and uh, the first piece is called The Crossing, and uh, it was a piece that I, uh, I created in um, discussion with Novesi Phillips, um, and the other one is called Letters. The next series is called Relay, and everyone here, had, most everyone here has talked about the sum of the gun. And this, in a way, was my response to the sum of the gun. And uh, the exhibit where this, this work, this piece of work, um, I looked at the Br'er Rabbit tales. And I looked at this, those stories as a way of trying to find any kind of cultural knowledge that was passed on at that time within the stories that could be used in scenarios like we were experiencing at the time. So, um, so these, the one piece I wrote to you, Rage, comes from a poem um, by Pat Parker. Um, and she, in that poem, she was talking about legacies and the legacy of I wrote to you, Rage. And um, the next piece was, is called Initiation that I created uh, 
during my residency in Trinidad at CCSF. Um, the third series is called Are You Cut Out for My Revolution? And in this series in particular, I was, I was very interested in the form or, or the creation of the, the materials that I used. And I would take cardboard, which is brown, and I would whiten it, and then I would cut out um, brown subjects from the cardboard. And the cardboard meant very many things, including transportation, et cetera, et cetera, and permanency, and questions around permanency and impermanency. Um, one minute. Um, this is my video performance, and these are the series here called Call Me Daisy, and many of these, Call Me Daisy, was a situation where um, what if King Kong actually was not male, but was actually female, and then he came out as a lesbian, and then uh, <laughs> renounced, <laughs> renounced his citizenship. So this is uh, Call Me Daisy with the Canadian flag. Um, Will um, is about legacy and references Pat Parker's poem as well. Um, I will go to Baker's Bananagrams. I, too, um, did some research on Josephine Baker and wondered what would she say if she had an opportunity to turn those bananas, you know, she had those the bananas, um, turn those bananas into bananagrams. So I did a video performance where I wrote some of the, the um, some of the, the quotes that she has been known to have said, things that she has been known to have said, such as, um, I want a rainbow tribe, right? Or, um, you know, the problem with whiteness. She talked about the problem with whiteness. And I, I wrote it, and then I, I gave it to people in the audience, who, which interestingly was mostly white people, older white people. Um, and uh, it was a little, but it was interesting. They they took it as like almost like a horoscope kind of thing, not horror, but <laughs> astrological sign. And they actually went home with it, and hopefully eventually ate it. Um, I'm wrapping up now. So my community art projects. These are some of my community art projects. The Church Street Mural Project is most recent, and the HIV. Um, AIDS poster project is most re recent, Religion Can Protect You and the Church Street. That's, those are the actual couple under the, um, the piece that I made for them, made of them. And I'm just about done. Curatorial projects. So these are some of the, the amazing artists that I've, I've worked with and I feel honored to have worked with them. Um, I curated uh, Win Winsome. Uh, she was one of my first uh, curatorial projects, really. Um, then I represent, and a number of you in the audience were part of the show. Um, and then Hero Project, Camille and Sandra and Grace, and Deanna, Shadow on the Shadow on the Prairie, which is an amazing show. All of those shows were amazing. Just one piece. I was hoping to put up there um, a show that would have happened at Walk Gallery, um, where Zanelia Nuholi, I would be curating her show, but. Um, there was a situation where Ryson Gallery was also showing her work at the same time. I found out, I called them up and said, hey, let's collaborate, let's figure out a way. And they, their response was, who the hell, what, what do you mean you want to collaborate on this? We've been, we've been working on bringing her for so long, we're thinking now of like not showing her work whatsoever. Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, and I, so, I went back to, to walk and we discussed it and we decided to, to just leave it about and maybe in a couple more years we will bring Zaneli again. So, um, which would lead me to my two, my two questions. Um, one question to put out to you guys. How could our forms of cultural production provide the ways for all of us to thrive and not to suffocate with rage? I don't know how many of you have had this experience, but I've been having this experience a lot. Um, and in, in view of can we all get along, is there a way that we can have more collaborations? And uh, that's it. <laughs>